Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today's video is a little bit different. I recently put up a post on Instagram letting you know 10 things that I wish I could go back and tell myself when I first started reselling as my main revenue stream. So, little background before we get into these 10 things that I would tell myself. A little background about me. So, two things. I have been a reseller since the late 90s. I started on eBay when I was still in high school and we could accept checks through the mail. E-commerce was not even a word. It was a totally different space, but I got onto eBay and originally started selling things from my personal collections. And so I've been a collector, uh, especially of mid-century modern since I was about 10 years old and I would cycle through my collections. And when I got bored with something or found something new and exciting I wanted to look for and hunt and be on the hunt for, then I was going to sell it online. You get that rush of the sale, you get that money back in your pocket and you can go buy this new thing that you really want. So reselling has just been in my blood. I've been going to antique stores and antique auctions since I was a very little girl before I ever even started collecting. I've got a very good knowledge base as far as antiques, as furniture, collectibles, things like that, but I had never resold clothing. So I got on Etsy in the early aughts when it launched and again, we're selling my collections and then sold off and on on Etsy and eBay over the years. And it wasn't until I lost my job of 10 years, which was a totally different career path, and I needed something to supplement my income that a friend of mine told me about Poshmark. And she said, don't you have boxes of Victoria's Secret stuff from the, from the Y2K era? And I was like, yeah, because I used to work for victoriasecret.com and for the catalog and when I lived in Ohio. So I had all these brand new things when they first launched pink and, uh, you know, we would have these huge employee sales where we would get things uh, that were sold by limited brands. So that's limited express, express for men, bath and body works. We owned Henry Bindle at the time. White Barn Candle Company was under limited then. And of course, Victoria's Secret. We'd also previously owned uh, Lane Bryant, so you could get Lane, Lane Bryant stuff, um, all kinds of stuff at these employee sales, but we would get it for 75 to 95% off. So you're talking really cheap. Uh, but a lot of it I never even worn. It still had the tags on it and I had had them in clothing safe spaces. So I started selling it on Poshmark and that first sale came through and I sold a tank top and I think thong set that was a uh, pink from you know maybe 2003 and it sold for like $50 and I was hooked. So I thought what is this clothing thing and I had to do a lot of research so it was a lot of trial and error. I watched a lot of uh, YouTubers on reselling and this is just what has worked for me. I'm not telling you that this is the end all be all because everybody's business model is different but these are things that have worked for me. So I hope this video is helpful to you, whether you're a seasoned reseller or a new reseller, but here are the top 10 things that I would go back and tell myself if I were to start over reselling full-time today. So the first thing is to have an inventory system, but to also have an inventory system that is simple and makes sense. Don't try to overcomplicate it. Now, there are many ways that you can do this and my way may not work for you, but I have used the same inventory system after I set it up. So I have not changed it over the years. It's just what works for me. I tend to be very methodical in my thinking. And so my inventory system is set up in a number system and bins in each bin. Uh, they're just all in numerical order. So that's what works for me. But whether you do it like that or you have letters on your inventory bins and then you put them in a spreadsheet whatever you do have an inventory system and just make it as simple and easy as possible this is going to set you up for the best success because when something sells you're not rooting around for it and stressing yourself out things are not getting lost and you're not having to communicate with your buyers that you can't find the item that you just sold but this also means that you need to have good bookkeeping because you need to be able to go back and say, oh, that's item sold on another platform on whatever date. 
and you're not getting a complete mess. <laughs> And that brings me to the next point, and that is to stay on top of your bookkeeping. So have a process in place. I know bookkeeping can be tedious. I am not someone who enjoys bookkeeping. I do have a background in it. I started my first job in bookkeeping and had a lot of administrative jobs after that, but I am not a numbers girl. I'm not like, cannot wait to get back to my spreadsheet to start flipping those numbers around, but it's important that you know your numbers. It's important you also keep track for tax season um, so that you're able, you're not at a total loss when taxes, tax season comes around. My therapist told me once, two things are only ever certain in life and that is death is going to come to you and those around you and I know that sounds really morbid, but it's true. And the second thing is taxes. So we know taxes are going to happen. Prepare yourself and have a system in place. What I like to do, this is just about me, is as soon as I have gone shopping and purchased inventory, I come straight in my office, pull out my receipt. I will take the total amount of the shopping trip and I'll divide it by the number of items I purchased. So that'll give me my cost of goods. Then I take my spreadsheets, which are just basic spreadsheets that I created. And I put every item in that spreadsheet from the shopping trip, put the cost of the item. So the cost is already in there. And then once the item sells, you can just fill in the rest of it. I fill in the date it, I listed it. I fill in the date it sold so I can tell how many days it took to sell. I list the platform. I list the fees. I list the shipping if there's shipping. And so I have all that in my spreadsheets already. So when it comes time for me to reconcile my bank account each month, it's super easy to do. I can have all my months set up. And when it comes time for tax season, it's already there, all the paperwork I just have to file. And just remember getting behind is gonna be so much bigger of a headache. It's better just do it now uh, and don't get way behind. I used to get so behind and then it was so frustrating because I couldn't remember where I put something, what it cost, all of that. So definitely, definitely recommend setting up some sort of bookkeeping that will help you. So I highly recommend, I wish I would have started immediately cross-listing, but I started selling on Poshmark first when I started selling clothing. You know, remember I have had experience with eBay and Etsy since the late 90s and the early 2000s respectively. But this go around, I was selling almost completely just clothing until I brought hard goods back into the scene. So I was only selling on Poshmark and that was a big mistake because you want to diversify your audience. Every selling platform has their own audience and some of them are international audiences. You can sell internationally on Etsy. You can sell internationally on eBay. eBay is the old lady, the dinosaur, whatever you want to call it. They've been around since the mid nineties. So their customer base is massive. So if you're not selling on eBay, you're missing out on that. Uh, then you have different uh, demographics. You have different generations that like to shop on different apps, you know, whether it's Depop or Mercari or Poshmark, whatever it is. If you're not cross-listing, you're missing out on sales. I mean, it's just that simple. And also don't wait until sales dip to, to start cross-listing. Cross-list now because when your sales go down on Poshmark, you could be making more on eBay or Mercari. And you don't want your income to just stop. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. I use a company called Vindu. I've been talking about Vindu the whole month of January because they have had a deal for any resellers that use Vindu can sign up to post once a day about how they're using Vindu in their, Vindu in their business and they get a year paid for. So for me, that's about $500 in savings for my business. Sorry for those annoyed out there, but it's important to me to not only promote companies that help me and that I've had a good experience with. I've done sponsorships with Vindu. I've had a good experience. I, uh, one of their um, founders, Josh, I've had a video calls with him. Uh, he, wonderful person. He's also a reseller. So I trust this company. I'm not recommending them to you just to get you to click on my affiliate link and sign up. If you do decide to sign up, I do get a little bit of a commission for that. But realistically, I would use Vindu even if I didn't have an affiliate link because I need to cross list. I signed up for Vindu, I think three years ago. I've only ever used Vindu. 
I've never used any of the other cross listing apps. And the reason why is because I've been happy and I've been approached by other cross listing softwares with sponsorship deals to use theirs. But I've been so happy with Vindu that I've actually turned down. I think one of them was for a thousand dollars and I turned it down because I'm happy with Vindu and I have no reason to leave Vindu. So in saying that, one of the big factors for me with Vindu was, if you haven't seen it, my most watched video on this YouTube channel is an eBay suspension. I'm not even going to get into the whole story. You can watch the video if you want. It has over, I think, I don't know how many views. I know it's over 500K, but um, Vindu saved me because when I got that suspension cleared up, they reinstated my store, all of my items were gone from eBay. And eBay unfortunately told me I was gonna have to relist everything from scratch. Well, since I had Vindu, I didn't even have to import those from another reselling app and then put them on eBay. They were already stored in my Vindu. So I was able to go into Vindu and relist my store on eBay. Didn't take me nearly as much time as it would have had I had to do it manually. So I stand behind Vindu. I like them. And if you're interested in trying them, again, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. It's for 25% off your first month. Uh, try them and let me know what you think. Um, maybe they're not for you. Maybe you use one of the other cross-listing apps already and love it. And that's great too. This is just what works for me. And I wish I would have been cross-listing from the very beginning because I missed out on a lot of sales. Okay, this is a quick one, but I think very important. Number four, if someone wants to make a return, don't take it personally. I can't tell you how many times my heart stopped and I felt like it was a direct reflection of me uh, and I took it personally. And there's no sense in that. 16% of e-commerce sales end up in returns. That's actually about the same as returns in a retail store. So no matter how you look at it, whether you're a brick and mortar store, whether you sell online, 16% is the average e-commerce return rate. You can choose not to accept returns on some apps, but they will still force you. Like eBay, you can accept no returns on eBay, but eBay is still gonna force you. If a eBay customer says item is not as described, it, you're gonna have to take it back. So don't take it personally, just address it and move on you'll be better for it and you'll feel better for it. <laughs> okay, moving on to number five. I wish I would have told myself to sign up for some bookkeeping software. So I do not have an affiliate link for this company, just a heads up, but I just wanted to share with you what I use. So again, like I said, I have a background in bookkeeping. I've been doing bookkeeping for uh, different kinds of businesses since I started working. So I do have a little bit of a background. I'm familiar with Excel spreadsheets. Uh, although we used Lotus Works back in the day in the 90s, if you know what that is, <laughs> I'm aging myself. So <laughs> I, I do have experience with bookkeeping. I set up all my spreadsheets myself, but I needed a bookkeeping software from the very beginning that could have reconciled my bank account. So with my business banking account, I wanted to be able to reconcile my books and I use QuickBooks Self-Employed. It is a great software. It's super easy to use, especially for someone, even if you have no bookkeeping background. I have my business bank account, my PayPal, my business credit card, all connected to QuickBooks. And I can import my statements from each of those. I can reconcile it with my receipts. Uh, they actually have software installed where you can take a photo of your receipt. So I'll take a photo of my Goodwill receipt and I'll match it to the transaction and keep that for my tax records. You don't even have to keep the receipt. Um, I do keep mine just because that's the type of person I am, a little neurotic, but, but you don't really have to do that as long as you have a photo of it and it's in your software. The QuickBooks is great for tax time because you can pull out spreadsheets of your revenue and profit and profit loss statement. Uh, you can track your mileage, which is great. They actually have on the app on your phone, you can turn it on, it'll track you driving around and then you can turn it off or do it manually, which I do both because uh, I do go to the post office every week. So I keep my receipts, but 
you definitely want to track your mileage because that is a deduction on your taxes not a tax professional here but um but i do love quickbooks i've enjoyed quickbooks and i think that they, it's a good bookkeeping software now there are plenty out there just do your research figure out what what works best for you but if i could go back in time i would tell myself to get some bookkeeping software <laughs> Number six is a biggie, and that is learn as much as you can about e-commerce tax filing. Now, you may have been doing your taxes for a long time, like I have. I think I've been doing my own taxes for about 15 years. One year, I actually paid somebody to do my taxes and had to pay them $75, and it's exactly what I had gotten when I did them. So... I learned my lesson and I've been doing my taxes ever since. So for me, it was important that I learn how to do my t business taxes also and learn as much as I could. This may not be for you. And in that case, I am not a tax professional, but I highly recommend that you hire one if you're uncomfortable doing taxes. And if you're interested in even learning about e-commerce, reseller specific taxes, I've got a course that I absolutely 100% stand by. Again, I do not have an affiliate link for them. So you don't have to worry that I'm trying to sell you something. I le legitimately am so thankful that I purchased this person's course. So the guy's name is Mark Two, And if you've been to any reseller conventions, you may have met Mark. Mark is a res was a reseller up until this year uh, where he put it on the back burner because his CPA business has grown so much. So he is a CPA. He has been a reseller for a very long time. He understands e-commerce and he has a way of explaining it that I think even somebody who is not interested in any of it could find it interesting. So I learned so much from his course and you buy it once and you reuse it. It is a hefty price tag. I'm not sure what his prices are right now, but uh, starting in the next week or so, he usually has $100 off of the tax course. So look for Not Your Dad CPA. I'll put it up on the screen. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. Uh, his name's Mark Two. He also has a website, uh, but you, you can purchase the course um, at that discounted rate. I believe I did that when I first purchased it. Um, again, it's, it's an investment. It's, it's not cheap, but he breaks down e-commerce taxes like nobody I've seen. And so I've been able to do my own taxes, my personal taxes, along with my business taxes for the last few years. Thanks to Mark. And the best part is once you purchase the course, you don't have to rebuy it again. He updates it every year. So as you all know, the big talk has been, the regulations are supposed to change. They didn't go into effect last year, and now they're not going into effect this IRS tax season, but they are coming. And there was a lot of scrambling. Um, I believe that's why my eBay suspension happened. I think eBay is freaking out a little bit. So these reselling platforms are required to 1099 you if you sell over $20,000 on their, on their site or have over 200 transactions. Now that's going to change. That threshold is gonna go way down to if you sell over $600. Because according to the IRS, as soon as you sell the first item, you are considered a sole proprietorship. So you are required to report that income on your taxes. Again, not a tax professional, but thanks to Mark, I have a lot of information. And that is why it's so important that you understand e-commerce taxes because it is going to change. But even if a platform doesn't 1099 you, you are supposed to report that income. Now, is the IRS going to come after you? I really don't know the answer to that. But I do recommend you check out Not Your Dad CPA because he's just a great person. He will answer all your questions. He's very accessible. And he does have a bookkeeping course also. I don't actually own that. I only own the Reseller Tax Academy. But I do highly recommend his company. And he does taxes too. He is... Uh, it, accepting new clients right now. He just got done with a two-day refresher uh, live on Facebook that I participated in. And so I do know he is accepting new customers. If you need a CPA, uh, you can reach out to him too. But uh, that's who I use. I have been very much enjoyed his courses. I reuse them every year and I do recommend Not Your Dad CPA. Okay, number seven is Poshmark specific. 
Now I know Poshmark has changed a lot on their app recently in like the last year. Uh, they were also sold, they went public, then they came off the IPO. But a um, <laughs> lot of stuff going on at Poshmark. But there is one app that I completely rely on for Poshmark. I know that I can go in now and they've added this feature where you can select your closet and share. You still have to watch out for the CAPTCHA. So you really have to still babysit your computer or your phone or however you're doing it. And I always laugh at my girlfriends and they roll their eyes at me because we'll be sitting on a trip to New Orleans or wherever to go thrifting and they're on their phone scrolling, 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 scroll to share their Poshmark closet. Guess what? I don't even think about it. <laughs> I have a Google Chrome extension that I use called Posher VA. I have been using Posher VA as long as I've been using Vendio. So the past three or so years, again, I've never used any other sharing app, but I do use them because it takes time to do these little mundane things. Why would I waste time? Time is money and I ain't got a lot of time to be sitting there sharing my Poshmark closet. So because of that, Posher VA automatically shares my closet. I have it set up on a schedule to share every two hours. Even when I'm sleeping, it's sharing my Poshmark closet. So my items are bumping up to the top of the feed. In addition, my pricing, I have built into it that I am automatically always going to offer you a 20% discount if you like one of my items, automatically. So Posher VA allows you to set that in there Chrome extension. And so anytime a customer likes one of my items, they will automatically get a 20% off offer with the shipping discount on Poshmark. I make the majority of my sales from offers being sent. Again, I know you can bulk send offers now on Poshmark, but why would I do that when I don't even have to think about it? And I literally pay this company at $25 a month. It's a no brainer to me. It's totally worth it. And I also have an affiliate link for them in the description below. I wouldn't use Posh, Poshmark without Posher VA. I just wouldn't do it. Um, and I make the majority of my sales on Poshmark, not on eBay. I know some of you are big eBay sellers, but for me, it's a no brainer to pay for Posher VA because I don't think about sharing. I don't th think about sending out offers. They have all kinds of new features on there. They have, uh, you can fault, you can set it to follow people, unfollow people, uh, share other people's closets. We all know that doesn't really help anything, but anyway, it is available if you decide you wanna do that. All kinds of really cool features. So if you'd like to get a discount on your first month with Posture VA, hit me up in the uh, description below and click on that link. I'll get a little bit of a commission and you will get to try them out, I guarantee it's gonna save you a lot of headaches and a lot of time. And like I said, my time is worth something. All right, number eight is a fun one. And I actually kind of did this in the beginning, but I would definitely tell myself, go for it. And that is find a community of resellers. <laughs> Let me explain why. It's more than just uh, forging friendships with other people, um, building yourself a community. This job can be lonely and it's nice to have people that you can call up and complain about some customer that's giving you a hard time or some weird glitch that's happening on, on one of the selling apps or whatever it may be. It's nice to have a friend group. It's also fun to thrift together. If you've watched any of my reselling videos, you know me and all my friends go thrifting. They're also resellers. We still find tons of stuff in the thrift store. Some people would say, why would you go shop with your competition? But actually, we end up pulling items for uh, other people, things I wouldn't necessarily sell that I know one of my other friends would sell. We pass stuff to each other all the time. It's always fun. And it's just overall been a great experience. Now, I said that I had started this in the beginning. I did. Uh, my friend Alicia over at Murray Life actually was kind of stalking some of us. <laughs> she was on Poshmark uh, looking for people who lived in our local area. She reached out to me said she was thinking about throwing a posh and sip. I said, oh, remember those? Remember posh and sips? I said, oh, I, you know, I was thinking about throwing one too. And she said, well, let's co-host. So she signed up, she signed us up. And the first time I met her was at our first posh and ship, posh and ship, <laughs> posh and sip. And after that, we became friends. And at that posh and sip, we also met our friend Tanya over at Double T's Treasures. 
um, and some other resellers that we've stayed friends with over the years. And then we've expanded. Uh, we invited our friends from New Orleans and Baton Rouge all over the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Join us for these different reseller get togethers. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and I am very grateful because it you know, you have these friendships of people that understand what you're dealing with, uh, what your business is like, but you also have networking opportunities. We share things like there's sponsorships available from different platforms, from different companies locally. Uh, maybe there's an offer being put out by YouTube or uh, another social media app for you to sign up for something. And so we kind of just help each other. Uh, so it's been great. So definitely try to find your own reselling community. I don't think you'll regret it. Um, I certainly don't. And I am grateful that I don't have to be lonely because if something comes up, I got a text chain or a phone call I can make and I'm super happy. Also helpful is during that crazy eBay suspension, it was my girl Tanya who called me the next day and said, hey, are you still banned from eBay? I got something for you to help you out. And she really saved the day as far as it was me getting in touch with eBay. So I highly recommend having a reseller community around you. And that leads me to the next thing. Number nine, don't get sucked into the reseller drama. Holy crap. Listen, I worked in, um, a, you know, regular nine to five situations. I worked for small businesses. I worked for corporations. I worked for a local school district for 10 years. Y'all, <sighs> there's drama everywhere you go, but holy crap, this reseller community is wild sometimes, totally wild. And look, everybody likes gossip every once in a while. It's not really great for you, but you know, as somebody who likes to watch The Real Housewives and other really terrible <laughs> reality shows, you know, I mean, we're living for the drama, right? But when you get sucked into this reseller drama, number one, the main reason that you're doing this right is it's your business. This is supposed to be your income. And if you get dragged into the drama, you could damage your reputation, your business, so try to stay out of all the drama, but then also just watching from afar can be detrimental because you can get sucked down a rabbit hole, can, especially for somebody like me who has ADD, a total distraction, and then you don't even know what you were doing because you're so invested in whatever the drama is. So try to avoid the drama if you can. It's just not worth it. I will say I have often joked that I need a little controversy in my life to build my uh, social media following. And April Fool's Day one year, Alicia and I were in New Orleans and I said, oh, I'm gonna put up a post on Instagram uh, saying, if you're friends with Alicia Murray, you know, go ahead and unfriend me or go ahead and unfollow me now. Uh, and <laughs> I think I put like a lightning storm background and and then she made some post on her Instagram and I actually had a couple people delete me so <laughs> but it was a joke controversy and we did have some of our friends messaging us I will have to say my friend Chris Cajun reseller um, he actually messaged me and was like yeah right and uh he knows us too well and so I was like just kidding I'm here with Alicia right now in New Orleans and in New Orleans and we're thrifting. So he actually called us out. But anyway, aside from joking, uh, controversy can really hurt you in your business. So just be mindful of that. Um, but I, I am also going to say that I have taken the time to stand up when I felt like it was important. Uh, bullying is not cool. I mean, uh, I am a woman in my 40s, even though I dress like a toddler sometimes. Um, so for me, it's like, life is too short for this stuff. I mean, mind your business and mind your business because, you know, it's just not worth it. And your whole goal in reselling, I'm going to assume is to make money and you're not making money if you're, uh, you know, out there getting sucked into other people's business. And so that's just my recommendation that I would tell myself four years ago is, girl, just stay away. Just stay away. Unless it's real juicy. <laughs> and number 10 might quite possibly be the most important of all, and that is trust your gut. 
I can't tell you how many times I have listened to other resellers say, you have to pick up this brand. Uh, you need to do that. I try to avoid you have to and you need to because who am I to say what you need and have to do? I have not walked in your shoes. I've not lived your life. I don't run your business. I am just somebody out here on the internet sharing with you my experience and what works for me. And these resellers who pretend like they know the answer to everything, it's just not true. Uh, and what works for me might not necessarily work for you. You may look down all this advice and say, none of this, I've tried all this and none of it's worked for me. And that's cool too. I mean, some things you really just have to figure out for yourselves. It's a lot of trial and error with this type of business. Uh, when I started, I, you know, knew very little about fashion and I have learned so much of trusting myself, uh, trusting what I know about vintage uh, and learning a lot. I do like to watch like haul videos and what sold videos to see what people are picking up, to see what's selling for them. Uh, does that necessarily mean it's going to sell for me the same way? No, it doesn't. But I've also watched haul videos over the years. Uh, there was one specific reseller, I'm not naming any names, who I cannot tell you how many times I picked something up because they said, oh, this brand's great or blah, blah, blah. And then it wouldn't sell. <laughs> and I'm like, at a certain point, it's like, okay, I'm not listening to this person anymore. Um, so... <laughs> So definitely go with your gut, trust your instincts, and remember that we're all just out here trying to make a living. We don't all know everything. And um, I hope you got a lot out of this video. It definitely was fun to make both the Instagram post and this list of 10 items I would tell myself when I started reselling full time because there's a lot of lessons still to be learned. And I'm sure you know, four or five years from now that I'm still going to have more lessons that I have come away with. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, definitely stick around. I'm always talking about reselling and how it has changed my life and sharing what's working for me and what's not working for me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.